In China, a 94-year-old woman has sued her own children for not looking after her. Zhang Zifang lives in the quiet village of Fusheng in southwest China with a population of about 3,800. Zhang's children originally agreed to take turns to look after their mother, but then quarreled over how they should distribute the burden between them. When they fell out over the issue, they went to the village court last November to seek a resolution. The settlement was swift. The court ordered two of Zhang's sons and their sister to take care of her for four months of the year and the other son to pay her 10 US dollars per month. The children must split Zhang's medical bills. Zhang's children all have their reasons for being unable to care for their mother. The eldest son, 71-year-old Zhou Mingde, now lives with his mother in Fuzheng, as the court ordered. But with a pension of only 13 US dollars a month, he struggles to look after himself and his paraplegic wife, let alone his mother. As the world ages faster than ever before, stories like theirs are becoming more and more common, and the governments and families alike are struggling to answer the question, who will take care of the old? Across China, where government help is rare and family loyalty is a cornerstone of society, more than a thousand parents over the last 15 years have sued their children for financial support. In July, the Chinese government went further, bringing into force an amended elderly rights law requiring children to visit their aging parents or face fines or even jail. Zhao Yaohui, a researcher on China's aging problems, said the social and economic changes have chipped away at traditional family values where children take care of their parents and the government's pension program is not effective enough to plug the gap. China is projected to have 636 million people over the age of 15, nearly 49% of the population, by 2050, up from 25% of the population in 2010, according to the U.S. Census Bureau. Zhang would like to go into a nursing home, but the few nursing homes in China supply only 22 beds for every 1,000 seniors, and most are too expensive for the average family. Zhang has no money, and she claims her children took it all. Parrot acrobats and peacocks have recently stunned tourists with their smart and spectacular performances at a bird garden in Yishui County, East China's Shandong province during the National Day holiday. The parrots perform such acrobatic acts as climbing ladders, riding mini bicycles on steel wire and jumping through iron rings. In a nearby yard, many peacocks flew from the mountaintop to search for food given by staff members there and formed a beautiful sight. A state-of-the-art water park is giving residents in Afghanistan's capital, Kabul, a new reason to have fun. But while men and young children excitedly splash around, women are excluded. The water park is situated inside a nondescript building in central Kabul. Just over a year ago, Mahmoud Najafi and three partners pulled their cash to build the venue on a 2,300-square-meter plot near the parliament building. In addition to towering slides, there is a huge wave pool eliciting noisy delights from adult swimmers that one might expect from children visiting the beach for the first time. The men wear swim shorts but no slingshot style suits were in sight. The creators of the novel Five Million US Dollars Endeavor are among the few in Kabul not wringing their hands over Afghanistan's future after 2014 when foreign combat troops are due to leave. In a city where the average wage is about 50 US dollars a week, a thriving middle class can afford the admission price of 500 Afghanis, equivalent to 9 US dollars. The popular facility, which can handle up to a thousand customers at a time, also has a restaurant, whirlpool, sauna, and lavish play area for young children, including girls who are allowed to mix with the opposite sex until the age of about 10. Women have made progress in education, health and work in a conservative Muslim society, but most still wear the head-to-toe burqa enforced by the Taliban when the fundamentalist movement ruled Afghanistan from 1996 to 2001. Segregation of the sexes and limits on the public activities of women remain the norm. With Afghanistan heavily dependent on foreign aid, ventures like the Kabul water park are a rare but reassuring sign that the economy may be able to sustain itself as donations shrink. The fifth seasonal floral exhibition has opened in the Iranian capital of Tehran. 
More than 200 domestic flowers and plant producers are taking part in the exhibition to showcase their latest products held at Golf Togo Park until Sunday. Various kinds of houses, apartments, gardens, ornamental flowers and plants are presented along park industries. By holding the flower and plant exhibition, Tehran Municipality is encouraging citizens to further use flowers and plants. Experience has shown that Tehran Flora Exhibition has been warmly welcomed. Iran's gains from flowers and plants amount to $50 to $60 million annually. More than 7 million saplings and 5 million tulip bulbs were planted last year in the city of Tehran, contributing hugely to the cleaning of the inner city atmosphere of Tehran. South Korean government recently announced a new state energy plan. The nuclear power industry has come into sharp focus, with the government expected to make changes in the country's reliance on atomic energy. Nuclear power currently accounts for 26% of South Korea's energy sources. Coal represents 31 and liquefied natural gas 28%. Five years ago, South Korean government announced the first basic energy plan to increase the proportion of nuclear power to 41% by 2030. But this plan has come to a halt. The newly announced first draft of the second basic energy is focused on keeping the use of nuclear power at a level of between 22% and 29% by 2035. Kim chang Siop, head of public-private working group on National Energy Plan, says attention is now being paid to how this will affect the revised energy plan on projects to build 11 nuclear power plants. More new such plants may be required if aged nuclear power plants shut down and the demand for electricity increases. The second basic energy plan advises the government to raise electric fees. The plan says the raise will help ease the concentrated use of electricity by lowering prices of other energy sources such as kerosene and liquefied natural gas. The fall foliage of the famous Sior Rock Mountain is expected to peak this weekend, but some of the nation's most beautiful national parks are already teeming with outdoors enthusiasts. At Guang Yum Siong, located 700 meters above sea level at Mount Siorak, odd shaped rocks can be seen between the tree leaves that have turned red and yellow. Maple trees with their vibrant red colors contrast sharply with the sparkly blue skies. Visitors to the mountain are awed by the colours of autumn in the mountains. Leaves began turning colours two weeks ago, starting from the top of Mount Siorak. Now it has descended down to the middle, and Mount Oday to the south of Mount Siorak is also turning colours, moving southwards along the Bekdu mountain range. This rental car running on a coastal road in South Korea is an electric vehicle. It can travel up to 100 kilometers on a single charge. There are many such cars on Jeju Island these days. Electric vehicles are also used as passenger cars. For example, this man bought one to save fuel costs as his round-trip commute reaches 90 kilometers. Electric cars are ideal for short trips in big cities. Moreover, some owners of electric cars can receive government subsidies of up to 18,000 US dollars, which means they have to pay only half the price for their vehicle. Also, more than 380 charges for electric cars have been installed on Jeju Island and in major tourist spots. In Daejeon and Gumi, electric vehicles are being used as taxis and buses. Electric cars are expected to become an indispensable part of everyday life when three Korean automakers such as Kia and Renault Samsung begin to sell them later this month. Executives at Japanese automaker Mazda Motor in Tokyo have unveiled their first hybrid car which they will launch in the increasingly competitive market in November. The executives say they will offer the hybrid version of the Exela model which is sold in Japan from November 21st. The car has a fuel-efficient gasoline engine and a Prius hybrid system made by Toyota Motor. Mazda says the model gets 30.8 kilometers per liter of gas. New car sales in Japan's domestic market have been sluggish. But car makers are increasingly competing for a share of the growing market for hybrids. Delegates from more than 100 countries and territories 
have adopted a treaty to regulate the use and trade of mercury at the United Nations Conference in Japan. The Minamata Convention on Mercury opened in Kumamoto Prefecture on Wednesday and will run for three days. Minamata disease is an illness caused by industrial mercury poisoning. It first affected residents in the prefecture city of Minamata in the 1950s. Mercury-related pollution and health problems are on the rise, particularly in developing nations. On Thursday, the convention unanimously adopted a ban on digging for mercury at new mines and a ban on the manufacturing, exporting and importing of products containing mercury from 2020. A UN environment program aims to put the treaty into effect in 2016 after having it signed by 50 countries and regions as required. Masami Ogata, who was recognized by Japan's government as a Minamata disease patient in 2007, described the convention as the first step towards changing the world. Ogata's grandfather, who was a fisherman, suddenly had cramps with his arms and legs and he died three months later without knowing the cause. Minamata disease was caused by mercury in industrial wastewater that Chiso released from his chemical factory into Minamata Bay. The toxic chemical accumulated in marine ecosystem. Thousands of local residents who consume fish and other seafood caught in the bay experienced symptoms. Some of them died. Tokyo's pop fashion street and a museum featuring Japan's fast food culture are among the most popular destinations for international tourists in Japan in a ranking released by a U.S. travel review site. Takeshita Dori, a pedestrian-only shopping street in Tokyo's Harajuku, topped the list released by TripAdvisor on Wednesday. The ranking is based on reviews of Japanese tourist attractions posted on the site in the past three years. It says the standings were determined by factors including the number of times the word cool was used in the reviews. Takeshita Dori is known around the world as a trendsetter in Japanese pop culture. The Ghibli Museum of Animation in Tokyo suburb of Mitaka ranked 7th. The museum is headed by renowned animation director Hayao Miyazaki. Meanwhile, the Cup Noodles Museum in Yokohama, west of Tokyo, is placed 10th. Its exhibits tell the history of the world's first instant ramen noodles. Japan's government sees tourism as a vital pillar of its growth strategy. It's trying to promote Japanese animation and food to overseas market in its Cool Japan project.